Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Khan Nguyen. I am the VP of IT over at Kilroy Realty. Um, <clears throat> I'm responsible for developing our uh, strategic roadmap from the IT side as well as the OT side and ensuring that we have the proper resources in place to execute on that strategic roadmap. Um, and then I also manage our, our, our overall IT costs and OT costs at our buildings. <clears throat> Uh, so who is Kilroy Realty? So Kilroy Realty, we're a publicly traded uh, public REIT um, that specializes primarily on the West Coast uh, markets, uh, markets such as Los Angeles, Seattle, uh, San Francisco, San Diego. Uh, those are our key markets. Um, and we have primarily Class A type of buildings. And you know we have some high profile tenants. Uh, some of our tenants include um, Salesforce, Netflix, Dropbox, uh, SAP Concur, uh, some to name a few. Um, that's mostly in our San Francisco region. And I would say like in LA, there's more kind of media-based companies like Viacom. And if you guys are into um, playing guitars, uh, we have like Fender's headquarters is down in Los Angeles as well. That's one of our tenants. So we're known primarily to be like a leader in um, sustainability. And uh, you know, most of our buildings are LEED certified. So for those familiar with that. Uh, so what are some of the challenges and problems that we face uh, at our buildings? I would say from a technical side, our buildings and field engineers primarily were focused on ensuring that they had connectivity to our buildings to that, so that we, they can uh, remotely connect and access their building management systems. So for our HVAC, lighting, um, just general building automation systems. Uh, so, you know, they would just go and order a DSL line or a cable internet line and go buy like a router or wireless router, then didn't put any type of security behind it. Um, a lot of our devices had kind of your default credentials, like admin, admin as your username and password. Um, and then these, these DSL lines were primarily uh, public facing. So, you know, anybody who can do like IP scan can be able to, can, you know, access systems, systems if they really wanted to. Um, so from a, a business side, there was a lack of standardization. You know, every building that we have it kind of operates on its own um, kind of accord. Uh, you know, you know they would. You know, every building had their own set of vendors, own set of um, uh, solution providers, and we you know they didn't really have like a IT background. They were just kind of making sure that the buildings were operating and making sure that they uh, were running smoothly. Um, so we didn't really have any like probably documented policies or practices. And from a real estate or from a risk perspective, you know, having our buildings exposed kind of lim uh, exposes us to a lot of risks and our brand reputation if something does happen, if there was a uh, cybersecurity incident. Uh, so, you know, anything from, you know, everything that's being connected these days, like if someone takes over and hijacks the HVAC system, they can control the temperature in that building or the elevator control systems, they can kind of, you know, mess around with that, those type of platforms. You know, so what we came out with was, um, you know, we we did these assessment. We hired a, a, a consulting firm called Intelligent Buildings to kind of help us assess kind of what our risk was and what our profile was um, at our at our few of our sites to kind of get a, like a broad view of our properties. So we have about like 100 buildings across our portfolio that spans across like 14 million square feet or so. Um, so, you know, they, we brought in this company and they did an assessment that kind of gave us a cybersecurity score at our buildings. And I would say we performed very poorly, like at a scale of one to five. We we're probably on the, the lower side of the one for most of our buildings. Um, I think one of the things that has been lacking in, I would say, in, in our industry really is, you know, we have like leader certifications for sustainability, how green your buildings are, but there's no real kind of, um, you know, certifications really for how secure our buildings are. Uh, so I think that's something with, I would like to see happen in our industry. Um, and then, you know, building the solution, it wasn't just like building the technical solution. We had to also partner up and get buy-in from our management team and our business users uh, from our organizational side and also from like a policy procedures. <clears throat> so sometimes we would have to go in and, you know, update our contracts or our leases to ensure certain things are um, <clears throat> included in our um, contracts. Uh, <clears throat> so from our organizational side, some of the things we, we addressed was, um, you know, we uh, presented the findings to our, our executive team. 
um, you know, for being publicly traded in our committee and, and our board members, you know, they're made up of kind of a wide um, breadth of people with vast experiences. Uh, and some of the people on there have some technical backgrounds. So, you know, in order to protect our Kilroy brand and our Kilroy um, you know, assets, you know, they, they saw this as a an area that needed to be addressed. Uh, so we also had to partner up with our building, our facilities management teams, as well as property management to kind of educate them about like what we're trying to achieve and why, you know, why we're doing this. Um, you know, traditionally, like we've been focused on the corporate IT side of, you know, making sure that the network's up and running, you know, that you know, we're doing pen tests. Uh, we, we monitor like the, the network for any type of security vulnerabilities. Uh, but we haven't really applied that type of practice over into our building networks before. Um, so then in a sense, like we had to kind of make sure that, um, you know, we work with our end users and, you know, even though we have the executive sponsorship, the people in the field didn't really have the, the knowledge and the expertise to, um, to address these areas. So from our technical sides, the, the solution we kind of came in and we thought about doing was, we have, you know, we built a corporate WAN, you know, using our resources internally, uh, but there's a heavy cost associated with that. Uh, you know, you would have to hire like a network architect, you would have to hire like a network engineer, uh, a server administrator to make sure that, you know, users are provisioned correctly and, you know, we set up the terminal services properly. Uh, so we did a we did a, um, a kind of a financial analysis. It was okay, hey, this is how much it would do, this is how much it would cost if we did this internally ourselves versus um, if we procured a outside vendor to help us uh, build this infrastructure for us. Um, so we identified a you know a, a few SC WAN providers, but I would say like the the one that really kind of stuck out for us was um, a solution called Iodium. Uh, they would kind of specialize more on so on the billing facilities management side of things and providing like a SD WAN provide for for that type of uh, solution. Um, so uh, you know part of the solution is we had to standardize our connectivity with these um, with, you know I call these inodes. And from there, you know once we get these inodes deployed, you know people can connect to the internet, but they would do it in a secure fashion. Uh, so if they wanted to connect their, you know, building HVAC systems to the internet, they would have to be plugged into the IODM network prior to that. And then from there, it can be authenticated. Um, and since our, 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 our regions are kind of spread out through the West Coast, uh, we had to kind of roll out the, uh, the infrastructure in phases. So um, as we rolled it out from you know, LA to San Francisco, uh, we kind of would add on to that infrastructure. Um, and kind of going back to kind of the, the kind of the cost and, and the support of it, um, instead of hiring a full-time staff to kind of monitor kind of this, I would say, kind of this central knock, um, you know, we, you know, Iodium has helped us with that front. Um, so they, you know, monitor to see if there's the connectivity down, if there's kind of abnormalities and who's connecting to the network. Um, and if, if users need to be provisioned to be connected to the network, you know, there's a process and workflow that we have to follow, an approval structure that uh, in order to gain access to the platform, uh, they have to fill out certain forms. Uh, you know, I think our focus has been primarily making sure that uh, we have infrastructure in place so that later down the line, when we want to deploy any type of uh, applications or um, you know, analytic type of solutions. Uh, we can kind of layer that in, but you know, we have an infrastructure to support that. So in, ten, in a sense, uh, this is kind of our architecture. Um, so, you know, on, on the right, you'll see kind of some of the systems that we would have connected to the, the internet. Um, I would say in our San Francisco, there's more unique type of requests that we get. Um, you know, some of their tech tenants, you know, their employees ride their bikes to work. Uh, so we had to put black bike lockers in place and some of our bike lockers needed to have internet connectivity for some reason. Um, so people can pay for the bike lockers via their phone. Uh, so it, <clears throat> in order to do that, you know, you know, we've set a standard that people know to kind of come to us and say, uh, you know, we want to be to get this connected. So, you know, how do we get that connected? So we had to kind of work with the vendor to make sure that they can connect to the platform appropriately. I think we're getting requests for like gym equipment to be connected to the internet now. So 
um, we want to make sure that they connect securely through our network. Um, and on the right, on the, on the left hand side, on the the, the iNode network, um, it's pretty much, pretty much like a terminal services type of environment. So in, if people want to have access to that place, uh, in, I guess if they want to remote into any of those other platforms, they have to kind of flow through through the IO node network and then go and from there remotely connect into the respective uh, building platforms or building systems. Um, so some policies and plans that we had to kind of update. Uh, we had to establish some vendor policies. Uh, for example, you know what would happen is you know these vendors that manage our buildings uh, and building systems, you know they would kind of hire their employees kind of you know as you know they come and go. We don't know when. Uh, their employees leave or come. So if someone leaves their company, they still, we still have access to that platform. Um, so we had to put some policies in place to say, hey, there's an offboarding process that you guys need to follow in order to work with us. And you know, there's an inboarding, onboarding process as well. Uh, we had to update our emergency response plans to include kind of cybersecurity type of related um, issues that they came up. Uh, we had established uh, emergency response plans already, uh, but we had to update them to include um, you know, that secure aspect of our, you know, how to connect to our buildings. Um, and we also kind of started developing our cybersecurity incidents response plan. Um, so we had to, we had to utilize that a few times already do some certain attacks. Um, I, I would say like two, two, that some of the attacks weren't too, um, too crazy. I would say like we had an instance over in San Francisco where we had a few buildings being, <laughs> Uh, they had like they had like printers that were, had Bluetooth enabled printers, and there's somebody that was going around connecting to these Bluetooth printers, and printing out that this is like a bomb threat, and you know you know if you don't wire you know you know a thousand Bitcoin over to us, then we're gonna blow up your building type of thing. Uh, so we had you know we had to alert the authorities and we had to respond to that, and then you know we had to kind of change our policy say you know anything that connects you know you have to make sure that you know, disable your Bluetooth connectivity to these uh, devices. Um, and a lot of times too, in our leases, there are certain costs when it comes to commercial real estate, um, there's costs that you can kind of charge back to the tenant, like physical security, like if you have like, a, you know, the type of maintenance and repairs, those type of things, you can charge that back to the leases. So we have language in our contracts and our leases to state that, um, you know, security is one of those things that could be billed back to the tenants. So in a sense, that cost is kind of diverted over to some of the, the tenants that we have. Um, so what are some of the benefits? Primarily, it's kind of, you know, we on the IT side see a lot of benefits of securing our assets. Um, but, you know, we had to convince our business and our, um, our executive team about, you know, how does it help? Uh, so the, the, main, the, the main thing is it reduces the risk at our buildings. We want to protect our assets. So in case there's like a breach at any of our buildings, then you know, we know that we have a kind of a peace of mind type of feel. Uh, and for our customers and our, you know, for our primary customers or our tenants, um, I would say most of them are pretty kind of more technically sophisticated and have like higher expectations. Um, so you know, they want to work in a building that they feel that they're secure in and that, the, that we value security as a priority for our, our tenants. Um, what are some lessons learned? I would say, you know, one of the things is, um, you know, we had a, we take this like plan, do, see, act approach. So what I mean by that is, you know, when we uh, embarked on this project, you know, we put together a, you know, uh, like a six month plan, project plan as to, okay, hey, how are we going to roll this out? Um, but what we came to learn was that, you know, every building is its own little separate animal. Um, Every building wants, you know, manages and operates kind of its own separate way. Um, you know, and there's, you know, every market has their own specific vendors that really do, you know, you know building management uh, systems differently. So we kind of have to kind of be flexible and be agile in that approach. So it's, you know, at least we have like a, a a plan that we can kind of fall back to. But as we as we move along and start executing and uh, implementing our plan, um, yeah, it was important to be able to to be able to be um, flexible and adjust as we go. And so I would say it's an ongoing process. You know, people in the field, uh, their main focus has primarily been 
uh, I just care about making sure I can connect to the connect to my systems and be able to remotely can, configure the platform. Um, so <clears throat> we have to kind of educate them about the value, the importance of you know securing of um, doing the cybersecurity for our buildings. And for the most part, I would say most people are pretty open minded about it. I think all the stuff in the media about cybersecurity attacks and stuff like that really kind of helps um, kind of drive that that message uh, to the field. Um, but, you know, I think one of the things, too, is that, you know, we see, you know, we don't want to be in the business or in the, in the focus of building out the infrastructures ourselves. Um, we want to make sure that we uh, have partners that can re we can rely on. So when things do happen, we can kind of uh, rely on them to, and, pay, and we pay them for to do that. Um, I would say another lesson learned is that there's a lot of uh, upfront effort that you have to take. Uh, we'd have to do like a heavy inventory of like all the buildings and what connectivity there there is at those platforms or at the buildings. Um, you know, every vendor has specific IP requirements. Um, you know, sometimes the vendors push back a little bit and say, you know, why are we doing this? Is I never had to do this before for other buildings, but you know, this is a, 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 a thing that's changing in the market. Um, so we have we had some tenants that have come to us and let us know that you know our building management system is exposed to the internet and you know we got to do something about it uh, so we you know, we were able to respond to them say we are we have a plan in place to execute on some of these things right now um, I think some other things is uh, you know as it relates to education is people need to understand what the risks are involved and like you know the benefits of doing this um, you know in deploying the solution we didn't really want to disrupt what they're doing drastically, but we wanted to kind of layer in, say, this is how you do things a little more securely. Uh, and this is this is why it's so important to do that. Um, so, and uh, I think that's, that's it. Thanks.